Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. The federal government has officially shut down. That's after House Republicans refused to drop demands that parts of Obamacare be delayed in return for approval of a mandatory government funding bill. Let's take a listen to what the president had to say. Uh, at midnight last night, for the first time in 17 years, the Republicans in Congress chose to shut down the federal government. Uh, let me be more specific. Uh, one faction of one party in one House of Congress, in one branch of government, shut down major parts of the government, all because they didn't like one law. That faction of the Republican Party that the president is referring to is the Tea Party. And with us to discuss the forces behind the shutdown and the rift happening in the Republican Party is Paul Street. He is a journalist and author of Crashing the Tea Party, Mass Media and the Campaign to Remake American Politics. And his next book is They Rule, The 1% Versus Democracy, which will be released early next year. Thanks for joining us, Paul. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. So, Paul, my first question is about the way the mass media has been portraying the shutdown. We essentially have a split happening within the Republican Party, and there seems to be this divide between, quote unquote, pragmatic Republicans like the John McCain's of the world and the ideological purists like Ted Cruz. What is really at the heart of this divide within the Re Republican Party? And can you give us a bit more context? Uh, well, you know, there are very real factions within the Republican Party, just as there are within the Democratic Party, and in fact, as there are in other parties, including the Green Party, and so forth. I don't want to overdo them, however. Um, and here I'm in some agreement with uh, uh, something you hear, you heard during the uh, debt ceiling crisis and also during this, this shutdown crisis uh, at the editorial board of the New York Times. They're right. Uh, to point out that it's it's sometimes an exaggeration to say that the whole government is being held hostage, the nation's politics is being held hostage just by a small faction called the Tea Party. Uh, the, the vote two days ago um, uh, to deny the continuing resolution, you know, to fund the government uh, unless Obamacare um, was repealed, you know, incredible demand, right, to, to, to roll into a budget process. Uh, was 231 uh, uh, House votes in support of that. And that's far more than the numbers of people uh, in the Tea Party caucus, which I think is about 45, 50 at the most. It's 203. It's pretty much a straight line party vote. The vote yesterday uh, to deny continuing resolution unless uh, Obamacare was delayed for one year was 228 votes. Again, much bigger. And this was also true, true, also true during the debt ceiling crisis. It was pretty much a rump vote of a, a much broader right-wing uh, uh, House Republican group uh, that's much larger than just the Tea Party phenomenon. We forget how far to, to the right, admittedly, with the Tea Party very much in sort of the shock to troop vanguard ever since 2009, but how far to the right the Republican Party, and in fact the whole party system in this country, has been moving over the last three decades uh, plus of neoliberal politics in the United States. There was a government shutdown uh, in the mid-1990s, carried out by Tom DeLay and Newt Gingrich. They didn't call themselves Tea Party in many ways. They, 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 they might as well have. I've been calling the Republicans half-jokingly uh, for the last few years the Tea Publicans. Um, that said, there's no doubt that the Republican right in the age of Obama, and even to some extent before that, in its um, desire to roll back what's left of the welfare state, what's left of the New Deal, and back in the Reagan era, in, or, era, in order to uh, crush what was left of the New Deal era, did call, has called into being uh, 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 an almost Frankenstein-like monster in the form of, uh, of, of Fox News, a far right-wing talk radio network, and, and has, has really created a kind of almost frothing constituency uh, in these in these very tightly gerrymandered, uh, often uh, rural, uh, white congressional districts. And these people seem to have gone just completely off of, of the reservation. And and it, it's gotten to the point that the, the big capitalist elites that called them into being are now sort of horrified of them. And you see the Wall Street Journal uh, in particular and some of the old line 
more centrist type of Republicans like John McCain and uh, Senator Coker from Tennessee, calling them wacko birds and 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 uh, and you know and being horrified by them. But you know the GOP establishment created all of this in many ways. What do you mean by that when you say the GOP establishment created them in many ways? Uh, it's a lot of the standard right-wing political money and, and groups, so the Koch brothers that were behind the Gingrich and the delay phenomena in the 1990s and were behind the Reagan revolution, um, a lot of the same institutions, the American Enterprise Institute, um, uh, Freedom Works, and the, and the broad panoply of groups that funded uh, the Tea Party phenomena, this sort of fake social movement, which was really a top-down corporate right-wing directed gra- uh, astroturf movement, really funded by traditional right-wing money, largely with uh, fairly traditional electoral purposes in mind, fairly traditional, um, uh, you know, basically just uh, in order with, with the basic mission of swinging the 20, when they were successful, swinging the 2010 midterm elections over to the right. Uh, to the GOP, and, and that's how m- many most of the Tea Party people that uh, that I interviewed in connection with my 2011 book, Crashing the Tea Party, conceptualized what their basic goal was. It was to uh, unelect Democrats and create a Republican majority in the House, tradi- a traditional objective. In the process of doing that, however, uh, they've really cultivated a group of people uh, who are, are are motivated by some pretty dark, almost proto-fascist, certainly racist uh, par- what, uh, uh, what the uh, American historian Richard Haas said are called paranoid style uh, 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 folks of people who um, um, don't seem to know where to stop and, and, and really are just sort of, you know, Ted Cruz, stand your ground, who are, who are willing to go all the way, you know, go to the wall. Uh, to stop this horrific Obamacare, which they have been told by Fox News and Rush Limbaugh and the rest of the right-wing talk machine, noise machine, is some sort of uh, incredible socialist government intervention uh, in the healthcare system, which is, of course, completely preposterous because Obamacare is a fairly center-right, corporate-friendly uh, healthcare intervention that was designed in part to uh, head off the real social democratic and majority supported uh, health reform, which was single payer. Okay, well, let's continue this conversation in part two of this interview, and we'll discuss more about who's really behind the Tea Party and if we're seeing a split happening between the elite factions of um, society. So let's uh, have you back on, but um, thank you very much for being on, Paul. You bet. And we'll check in with you guys later on when you can watch part two of this conversation. Thank you for watching The Real News Network.